How did it happen? How did it go from what could have been a routine police matter cleared up in a couple of days to a bizarre web of coincidences resulting in I killed a gentleman in the center. I betrayed a lady at the bar. I'd die in a bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I love her, but it's too late. <laughs> So there I was, alive. My plan had worked. After I got away from those incredible actors, I rushed down to the bar where I knew I would find Felicia. And there she was, with those big eyes batting. When she got over the shock of seeing me alive. <gasps> Roxanne! Felicia! Roxanne! I'm sorry I worried you. You're alive! Yes, I'm alive. It was a ruse. It was a ruse, I tell you. But it was the best ruse ever. In fact, I think it was my best acting role ever, ever, ever. <laughs> you gave me such a fright! Why would you do that to me? Oh, sit down. Sit down, Felicia. Please. I'm so sorry. The way that she was so worried, it made me scared. I mean, she had never been that worried before. And it's all about the theater, isn't it? Anyway, so, <laughs> what happened was, is that I had to go away because this is 1947, and we can't be seen out on the streets. And, and I love you, Felicia. I love you. But we can't have them. We can't have the, the producer of our entire company find out. My goodness, I'd be fired. Fired, I say. I don't want this to happen to you. I would never have allowed this to happen. But it's just how I feel, Roxanne. I know it's wrong. I know it's wrong, Felicia. We're in a public place. Compose yourself, my goodness. Everyone knows me. I mean, I have a disguise on. It looks quite like me. <laughs> All right, well, I'll just, I'll just pretend that I just like you. Just like, just like you, not like, like you. That's all you can do. That's all we can ever do nowadays. Now listen, Felicia. I am going to go, and I'm going to meet you back at your place later at exactly 10 p.m. Will you be there? I will be. Do you promise never to do this to me I again? I promise. I promise, Felicia. Now, I'm going to go first. Follow me after counting to 10. Count to 10, Felicia. I love you. I love you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Fans. <laughs> I tell you, fans. Oh. I couldn't believe my eyes. She was alive. Alive. <laughs> Not really alive. Oh, I loved her. I knew it didn't. I knew it was just wrong, but oh god, I loved her so much. She kept going on and on about loving her. <laughs> Never thought she'd stop until finally she counted to ten and walked away. Five. Four. <laughs> oh, where was she? Three, two, one. They never expected Ernie would be caught in a public place. No one ever expects Ernie in a public place. <laughs> <laughs> With this newfound information, he strolled back, and I went back to the studio, to my favorite private place. <laughs> fools, all of them fools, thinking old Ernie was kaput, that he was done for, but he was really doing, was meeting his confidant. I have some information, madam. What do you have for me? Roxanne is alive. She's alive? Where is she? I just saw her in a very public place in love with a woman. Madam, I know I thought it was impossible when you told me to find her. I was desperate. I didn't know how I was going to do it. But I finally found them for you, madam. I finally found her for you. Are you proud of me? I'm proud that you finally went to a public place that speaks a lot of growth for you. <laughs> <laughs> but mostly, this is terrible for our bottom line. We can't have our main star no. running away with a woman. No. I have to think of it. 
think of what this would do to my career. Roxanne never enjoyed reading lines with me. I'm 29, madam. I'm practically dead to this town. <laughs> You've got one or two good years left, but we need to figure out what to do. We need to come up with a plan. You know, you're the only friend I've got left in this town. I think friend is a loose term between us, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're the only loose friend I've got. <laughs> I care about you, madam. I don't share this private space of mine with just anybody. <laughs> you know I'd do anything to save my career, and I know, I know in my heart, you're the only person who cares about my acting career, too. Yeah, I care about your acting career, oh, definitely. It means so much to hear that. So when you say you'll do anything... Anything? I would... Do you mean anything, Bernie? I'd do anything, madam. I've been practicing with the prop guns. <laughs> I know exactly how to take a life. <laughs> you do have your finger on the trigger, right, Bernie? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Let me be clear, it's the part that you can trigger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Bernie, I need to get out of here before your irritable, irritable owl syndrome yet again. Should be any moment now. <laughs> I'll wait your orders. Just say the word. Say the name, and, and Ernie will play his part. you gone. So if you leave this town, I won't have to kill you. But if you stick around, why, you might find yourself at the wrong end of this gun. You're making me real nervous pointing that at me, Stan. It should make you nervous. It would kill you. <laughs> Please excuse me. <laughs> <laughs>
The studio wanted to cover it up. They didn't want the public to know that a stunt double had died. It was Miss Duvay. She's covering everything up. So, you're trying to help us understand that nobody was murdered at all, huh? Well, I'm trying to tell you that Miss Duvay is trying to pass off a dead woman as another woman. I think that's a crime, isn't it? She's trying to get rid of me, too. It's the whole studio. It's bad. Something's still rotten. It's too clean, too easy. It <laughs> makes me smell a rat. I think so, too. The trouble is, they're all mixed up in it. I can't tell what's what. Lolita, Roxanne, this one. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> Captain, maybe give me a minute alone with Stan, will you? <clears throat> I trust you. Like I said, I believe you, Stan. You do? I can tell you was believing me because, <laughs> why, I could read people, and there's a certain thing people do when they're telling the truth, and it's this, they shimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Even harder than he was doing it now. <laughs> Even more! I can tell that he believed me. Can you tell I believe you? <laughs> I believe me. I really believe you! <laughs> Good, I'm glad someone does. And since you believe me, I, I can get everything off my chest around you. I trust you now. Everything? Everything. Is that a two-way street? It's a two-way street? Saying I had something to say to you, and it was something that I might not want to say out loud, but I could say it out loud to you? Yeah, tell me. What if I told you that when I saw you shimmying with muscles, I felt jealous? <laughs> you, you felt jealous of the two of us? Yeah. But if I told you when I looked at you before, with your big eyes, and your quivering nose, <laughs> and your vivacious lips. <laughs> <laughs> Conflict of interest, you fallen in love with me and my luscious lips. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't know what you call it. I know everybody calls it wrong, but I don't find it wrong. Do you find it wrong? You know, since I've seen Roxanne and Felicia together, I've been thinking about myself and why the way you shame. <laughs> Even more than that. <laughs> Even more than that. <laughs> it riles me up in a way I hadn't felt in a long time. Think about it, Stan. How long did you spend chasing Roxanne, knowing that she wasn't interested in you? Well, it started when she was in this film where she was playing a man. That's when I really fell for her. Pretty safe, don't you think? Why don't you tell me all about that moment in the film when she was playing a man? <laughs> Do you want to get that, sir? <laughs> That's right. Call me Charlie. Well, here you go, Charlie. <laughs> Thanks for letting me be an extra. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Now, pick up your gun. Something's perked up. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn it. Damn it, Stan. I have the purse again in my hand. Damn it.
You like me like me? I like you like a good, good friend. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. Awesome. Pretty safe bet, I'd say, to keep chasing a woman who only likes you as a friend. Maybe I knew deep down. If I, if I loved a woman who didn't love me, then it could keep me from these feelings I had for other men. So, what of it? You love me? You're gonna like it? You like the slide? Doesn't really matter. A guy like you and a guy like me get in a lot of trouble for something like that. You know, officer, officer. Hey, I got a confession to make. Oh, another one? My name is Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Mind if I call you Bob? <laughs> you can call me Bob. Bob? It's short for Paul. Listen, <laughs> Bob. Bob. If you really love me, why don't you do something for me? Why don't you put away Miss Duvet and that Ernie? Put away? Put them in jail. Put them away. No one will ever see them again. That'll make my sister happy, and that'll make me happy. And if I'm happy, then you'll be happy, Bob. Put away on on what? What charge? Wait, you're listening? She, she had an extra kill. And she, she, got kept it out of the papers and then. They said it was an accident. The extra jumped off a building as part of a stunt. Do you want me or not? Huh? I don't care. You police are all dirty, aren't you? Make up a story, huh? <laughs> I just want them to be put away. Maybe the two of us fight. Maybe we could go off to. The rich man district. <laughs> Just the two of us. <laughs> sure. Sure, why not? I'll do that. Alright. Do that. And then two of us will have a little of that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you love him? Did I hear that right? No. <laughs> Drunk, Samantha. What of it? Is that what you were doing when I was in the gutter? Playing hanky-panky with the other boys? No, listen. When I was with you, I was with you, and I loved you, or at least I thought I did. Sometimes you think something's the case, and it turns out not to be the case. Isn't that right? You betray me. You disgust me. Watch your mouth, Samantha. So are you going to crack this case? You're going to turn me in? You're going to betray me? You're going to take all the glory while I'm back in the gutter because my man fell in love with another man? Listen, we could work this so you and I both get what we want. You need someone to be sent up the river for the murder. I want the right person to be sent up the river. All right, so the person who gets there first is the right person. We've got a couple of suspects. You telling me you're above planting a little bit of dirty evidence? I am above it. Since when? I'm clean now. Ah, clean. <laughs> Look at you. You're a mess. Look. What do I gotta do? Here's what we gotta do. We just gotta frame those people. Just like you overheard him say. That duvet woman. Yeah. You frame them, they go down for it, you get the job, maybe even get a nice promotion, and I'm... I'm out of here. <laughs> okay. Come on, Samantha. We've never done much good by each other all these years. Let's do one last thing that works. Fine. I'll just live out my years, cold and alone behind the desk. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> so I left the station, made my way over to the studio, looking for that duvet lady. Yeah, no, we gotta make all the money from this film, because if we don't do this, 
by Warner Bros. One second, there's, there's a police officer here. I'll, I'll call you back. Captain, can I help you? Can I get you something to drink? <clears throat> no, I'm clean. <laughs> <laughs> I because you're, you're wobbling pretty good there. Would you like to take a seat? Yeah, I'm going to have a seat. Listen, I know that you're behind the death of that stunt double. What are you talking about? Well, for starters, she didn't just fall. She had a shot right to the chest in her. <laughs> that happens in stunts sometimes. We want them to be as realistic as possible. <laughs> Real guns? If it works, it works. <laughs> that gun, we found it. We ran fingerprints on it. It belongs to two people. Two fingerprints were on that. I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, we got powers. <laughs> Yours and Stan's. Stan? Yes. Well, of course it makes sense that my fingerprints were on there. I handle all of our props. I make sure that they're clean and orderly before they go anywhere near set, so I have nothing to do with this. You're a pretty lass. Thank you. Tell us the truth here. Is it you? Was it Stan? I gotta know the truth. Man, I'm sorry that took so long. Eh? <laughs> oh. Bertie, Captain's here wondering about that uh, stunt double. Is this Captain? Samantha. Giving you trouble, ma'am? What are you going to do about it? We got your fingerprints on a murder weapon. We got your fingerprints on a murder weapon. Well, she's not talking any sense. You said they were Stan's fingerprints. You're drunk. You don't know what you're talking about. I meant Ernie's fingerprints <laughs> on it. <laughs> well, we can't trust anything you say anymore. You have no idea what you're talking about. I've had half a bottle of gin, all right? Allow me the... Maybe you should go home. Take a nice long nap. Yeah, you wouldn't want this reported to the mayor, would you? And the mayor and I happen to be very, very good friends. I think Don't go to the mayor. We have to be very good at convincing people in this business of things. You don't want to take her home, boss? I think the good captain can make her way out with your help. Right this way, captain. <sighs> about what just happened here. Madam, that police captain's after you. She's trouble. She's trouble, madam. Someone's got her on us. But who? Who would send her our way? Ernie? You don't have anything to do with this, do you? Madam, you're, you're my only loose friend in this town. <laughs> you're right, you're right. Whoever it is. I think they know what's coming for it. <laughs> <laughs> we never talked about this. I'm not going to touch it because they can find fingerprints these days. But otherwise, right, right. Up. <laughs> they're not going to know. Don't what's point it. They're not going to know what's coming for them, madam. <laughs>